Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about hypothyroid diet tips that you can use to help your body and your thyroid work more effectively. So I have five tips here and let's jump in right now. So the first thing that I want you to think about when you think about improving your diet or changing your diet to improve your thyroid is the type or the quality of the food that you're consuming. Now in my experience, and I think this is probably well known at this point, whole foods are going to be the best option for you. The question is not whether whole foods are healthier than processed foods, we all know that. The question is how can you go about eating more whole foods um, in a way that'll keep you consistent because that's the key. You need to do this for a long period of time in order to get results. But even doing something for some period of time is better than nothing. So what I've done is I, I'm gonna list here six different diets that are all whole food based that you can use. And I have recommended each of these diets personally uh, to thyroid patients in the past and have seen success with every single one. So it's more about figuring out what works best for you and not, not, not that one is better than the others necessarily. So we have Whole30, the Elimination Diet, the Keto or the Carnivore Diet, the Paleo Diet, the AIP or Autoimmune Protocol Diet, and the Gluten-Free or Dairy-Free and Soy-Free Diet. Again, I have seen success with any of these diets so it's not a matter of one is better than the other, it's more a matter of figuring out what works best for you and what you can do with long-term consistency. Number two, the next tip that you need to be aware of is that no matter what type of diet you use, you need to think about the quantity of the food that you're consuming. So this has more to do with calorie restriction. Now, in the case of many thyroid patients, they are struggling with issues like weight gain. And that may be you right now listening to this. So it's tempting for a lot of these patients to reduce their calories, right? Because that's sort of the standard advice. Reduce your calories and you'll eventually lose weight. But I'm here to tell you that thyroid patients are, shouldn't really be considered in the same category as the average person who doesn't have a thyroid problem. And that's because calorie restriction impacts them much differently than it would a person with a healthy thyroid gland. Now in the case of calorie restriction, what it does is it reduces T3 levels and it increases reverse T3 levels. And if that sounds like mumbo jumbo to you, what that means is you're losing more of the, or lowering more of the most active thyroid hormone in your body and increasing an anti-thyroid metabolite called reverse T3. Not something you want to do because most patients already struggle, struggle with low T3 levels. So no matter what happens, in terms of quantity, make sure you're eating enough food, enough whole food, so that you don't do this and you don't negatively harm your thyroid. On this topic though, there's a difference between daily calorie restriction and intermittent calorie restriction. So that would be something like fasting. Now, it looks like to me, based off my experience, uh, there's not a lot of data to back this up, but I have personal data in helping a lot of different thyroid patients, so I can tell you from, from that experience that this is true, and that is daily calorie restriction. So for instance, if you were to lower your calories by, let's say you're lowering down to 1,500 calories per day for about three weeks or so, that daily calorie restriction is enough to see negative consequences on your thyroid lab tests. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you can get away with intermittent or prolonged fasting without that negative consequence on thyroid function. So you can still lose weight by intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting as, as the case may be versus the daily calorie restriction. So if weight loss is your goal, focus more on fasting than on daily calorie restriction. Number three, the next thing you wanna focus on is eating to reduce inflammation. Now we know that inflammation is bad for the entire body, but it is especially bad for the thyroid because much like calorie restriction, it also has the potential to drop T3 levels. Again, not something you wanna do. So you can alter or impact your body's, the inflammatory levels inside your body by either adding certain foods or by, and or I should say, removing certain foods. So I'd recommend doing probably both of these options. And by the way, even whole foods, the wrong whole foods, can cause inflammation in certain patients. And I'll talk about that in just a second here. But if you're trying to reduce inflammation by adding certain foods, you're gonna wanna look to add more fruits and vegetables, non-processed healthy oils, that would be like extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, um, grass-fed butter, etc., fish, and nuts and seeds. These are the healthy foods that have properties built inside of them to help naturally lower infl inflammation inside of the body. 
Now, you can also go about reducing inflammation by eliminating certain foods. And again, some of these are whole foods, so you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. But thyroid patients tend to do best when they're avoiding gluten, dairy, processed foods. Again, that's kind of a no-brainer. Seed oils, this would be industrial seed oils, which are added to just about everything. So if you're eating fast food or any sort of processed food, one of the main reasons they're so unhealthy um, would be because of these added seed oils. And then foods that you personally don't react well to. So that could be something strange like potatoes or rice. Maybe you don't react well to potatoes or rice. Maybe you do better on sweet potatoes, but the next person might be flipped. Okay, so any foods that you personally react to negatively, avoid those. Coffee is another one that should be avoided. Soy, and then excessive amounts of goitrogens. Coffee obviously is not a, uh, people get angry when I say that, but it's been my experience that thyroid patients do much better when they avoid coffee. I have a more detailed video describing soy because that one's a little more complex. And then also the goitrogen topic is a little more complex as well. But as long as you are boiling or steaming your vegetables, you shouldn't have an issue uh, with goitrogens. But what I'm really saying here is don't have a ton of them, right? Don't eat a pound of kale a day. Most people aren't gonna do that, but that's kind of the idea here. So eat to reduce inflammation by being smart about the foods that you consume and smart about the foods that you avoid. Number four, we have um, something that has to do with nutrients. So certain foods are higher in nutrients that thyroid patients need. And there's nothing magical about this. It's just that as a thyroid patient, your body has a higher demand for certain nutrients. And you can fulfill that demand by eating certain foods. You can also fulfill that demand by taking supplements, but my recommendation is to get, this, get these nutrients from food as often and as frequently as possible. So I have six different nutrients here that thyroid patients need in higher amounts compared to the, the average population. And I'll go over those right now, and then I'll talk about foods that are high in them to give you an idea of what type of foods you can consume. So we have zinc, magnesium, selenium, iron, tyrosine, and iodine. Zinc is important for a number of functions, including thyroid cellular sensitivity. Uh, magnesium is helpful for those who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis uh, in terms of energy production and moving iodine in and out of, in and out of the thyroid gland. Selenium for uh, the immune system and for reducing antibodies in patients with Hashimoto's. Iron for the production of thyroid hormone. Tyrosine for the production of thyroid hormone. And iodine for the production of thyroid hormone. All of these need to be obtained in ideal amounts, not too much, right? Especially in the case of iron and iodine, you have to be careful not to take too much. Um, but the other ones like zinc and magnesium and selenium, most thyroid patients are not getting enough of these for, from their diet. So if you wanna get more zinc, I'll give you two food options here. You have the option of oysters or beef. For magnesium, you can get those from pumpkin seeds or chia seeds. From selenium, you can get those from Brazil nuts or tuna. And I have more videos, by the way, that discuss uh, the pros and cons of using Brazil nuts. So I recommend checking that out if you want more in-depth information there. Iron you can get from red meat if you want to get it from an animal source or nuts if you're going for more of a plant-based source. Tyrosine is, is just an amino acid, so anything that's high in protein will generally have a sufficient amount of tyrosine, but animal sources of protein, pretty much any, um, are high in tyrosine, so that gives you usually what you need. And then iodine you can get from fish or yogurt. And iodine, by the way, is found in lots of foods you're probably not aware of. So, and I have another video which discusses hidden sources of iodine in diet and so on. So if you're worried about iodine, make sure you check out that video as well. Then lastly, if these things um, are not working, you have to realize that even though diet is important, it's not everything, right? And there's gonna be some people who get upset about, at me about that, and I understand. But the truth is, you can do as much as you possibly can with your diet, and that's not gonna be sufficient by itself to solve every problem that's going on inside of your body. There are other factors that impact your lifestyle that are sometimes even more important. Yes, diet's important, it's always important. No matter what, you should be optimizing your diet if you have hypothyroidism. But you also can't discount the effect that stress has on your overall body and thyroid function, a lack of exercise, and other lifestyle factors as well. So replacing nutrient deficiencies is one of those things that's really important as well, because you can eat as much food as you possibly can, but sometimes you need a little bit extra. Sometimes you can't get that demand every single day. So that leads me to my next topic, which is if you'd like to support thyroid function, if you're doing all these things, if you're following this dietary advice and you're feeling better, but not quite all the way where you want to be, I'd recommend checking out this video, which discusses different nutrients and supplements that you can use to help boost thyroid function in a natural way. And you can do that next.